Hi all, let's look at Senpai against Leela in TCEC Season 13. This is round 16. The book moves given the first four ply. Four ply is four half moves. Uh, so C4, E6, this is the start position. Senpai plays Knight F3. We have the solid D5 being played, Knight C3. D takes C4, E4, Bishop B4, Bishop G5, H6. So if the bishop steps back, then g5 could be dangerous with ideas of knight takes e4. So white took on f6, queen takes. Black does have that pressure on the dark squares now with a dark square bishop without a counterpart and strikes at white's dark squares with c5, e5. And the queen actually just goes back here. By the way, here, if d takes, this is far too dangerous taking here. Although knight d2 saves losing a piece, black is better in this position. So uh, e5 is white's idea. Queen d8, putting pressure on the dark squares now from d8. D takes. And yeah, we have what potentially could be uh, a dry position here with symmetrical pawn structure. Leela keeps the king in the center. A very nice move, keeping the king in advance of end games. The king could be handy there. It's safe enough, it seems, at the moment to do this. Rook c1, bishop takes c5. Bishop d5, bit of a tactical move to reroute. If ed, then knight takes, followed by rook takes, is nice for white. So this rerouting is permitted. <laughs> rook d8, bishop e4. What has it achieved? Well, the queen side is a bit uh, immobilized at the moment by that bishop on e4. f5, trying to drive the bishop away. e takes, g takes. And now again, Lilo drives this bishop away from this nasty diagonal, actually. But the e5 square has been compromised. Lilo addresses this, knight c6. And again here with king f6, which is also addressing bishop takes f5. So king f6, I'm pinning it, and logical anyway. Bishop b3, we have bishop b4 here. a3, bishop a5, bishop rerouting. a6 here. B4, bishop goes to c7. G3 is played. There's an idea of bishop f4 now here, which is some pain on the dark squares for white. For example, if bishop b3, bishop f4, maybe white can play this, but it's pretty even. So it seems as though this is slightly compromising for white's king, though. And the bishop just pops, pops back, actually, bishop b6. Now this gets really surprising to me. Senpai plays h3. It doesn't seem as though this is entirely a necessary move. Uh, as humans, we can see that the g file is pretty dangerous for the white king. Uh, you know, it's the rooks that are going to be more readily able to tap into the g file, surely. And to start moving pawns around the king here seems a little bit on the risky side with h3. Especially if there's some follow up with g4 later. But uh, yeah, I mean, this position, it's it's just strange that Senpai seems to have played h3. Uh, as an alternative, uh, for example, uh, I'll give you bishop c2 as an alternative. This kind of thing, maybe black's nice with knight d4. The dark squares are slightly advantageous to black in some of the variations. So this could end up being uh, a nice, very pleasant position for black. However, uh, just this one, bishop b3, this this approach, just laying rook d3 tactically, there's knight a4. This Even this position is roughly equal. It's difficult for black to do anything. There's cramp here. There's holes on b6 and c5, well, especially b6. Uh, it's That would be interesting for white as a gambit for positional pressure. Or king f1, king f1. Uh, this seems safe enough, even if there's uh, knight d4. This seems safe enough, roughly even position. So it seems strange to me that uh, Senpai plays this, h3. We have bishop a7, and now g4. Again, it just seems really a little bit odd. Uh, this is some sort of engine breakdown here or something, not estimating uh, the g file. Rook g8, king f1. Here, if... Knight h2, this is just getting really 
awkward for no reason at all. Uh, HG, for example, rook h8 and uh, bishop b8, for example, bishop f4, bishop d7, black's getting a big advantage here. The other rook can swing across. There's this diagonal. It's nasty. So uh, we have king f1 just losing a pawn, basically. Uh, the, the compensation is not entirely clear here. Although, I, I guess you could argue, well, interesting pawn sacrifice, positional pawn sacrifice. Or is it? Is it the take on e5 and knight e5, that sort of thing, to get a bind on the dark squares? We have bishop d7, rook cd1, rook g7, rook d6. The king steps back here, and now the bishop steps back. And now the knight protects e6. Black's on the defensive. It looks as though white's got some pressure here. Is it enough? Knight f7 hitting the rook. Now b5, which does commit the pawns a bit. If a knight ever comes to c5, this is dangerous for a6. Uh, at the moment, there's a guardian of c5 in any case. Rook d8 just taking off a pair of rooks, potentially. Now simplifying uh, is possible at some point with rook takes d4. But Leela chooses to play this, protecting e6 for the moment. Rook's, rook goes back. And now this simplification to a pawn up. Where is white's compensation for the pawn? Knight d6. The bishop occupies a nice diagonal. Black's got this theoretically a running h-pawn outside past pawn. But it's kept under lock and key. Knight f5. Rook h2. So it does seem actually very difficult to make progress here. Is it nullified? In the meantime, with this structure, there is an Achilles hell of Black's position. If a knight ends up on c5, this is extremely unpleasant. We have king d6, bishop h5, rook g8, king e1. King e5, the king's activating. Rook g8. Now knight a2, betraying the idea knight c1 to b3 to c5. So. This is uh, this maneuver I first noticed in a, a classic world championship game, Capablanca against Aliakin, and uh, Aliakin, um, you know, played this positional maneuver to see if I was very impressed at the time. Uh, so, Senpai's positional play is is nice in this respect to try and get a knight to c5. And what can White do about this? Uh, Lina actually makes sure this pawn's got better prospects with rook d4, trying to get rid of the blockader with rook h4 here. So white's pursuing a nice positional plan as well, to Senpai's credit. Uh, so knight b3 with the dangerous knight c5, but the king is more active clearly than, than the white king. And now check and trying to get rid of the other problem with this pawn is uh, this bishop. Uh, so after knight c5, yeah, this is a big problem now, but uh, Lila is counter-sacking a pawn here. And now this pawn really is an outside running pass pawn. It's more evident. And it moves for the first time for ages at the sacrifice of the a6 pawn. Uh, King f4, knight c5, e5. So equal on pawns, but you can see that uh, this single pawn is restraining both these pawns. We've got outside running pawn. We've got a more active king. Can Lila play like Capablanca here or something to win this end game? King f3. Right here and now, if here then ninety four check. <laughs> so um, we have uh, h four. Knight check here, king g one, bishop d five. The bishop is restricting that knight quite nicely here. King h two, bishop e six, stopping king h three for a moment. King g two e four. Knight b1, and now king e5. The king is potentially coming over to win these pawns via the dark squares. Knight c3, bishop d7, protecting b5. Knight b1, now it's stepping in. So the advantage is starting to be pronounced there in this end game. The extra aggressiveness of black's king gives an advantage here, it seems. The bishop isn't so bad either. So the king steps in further. Now king c3, so there's a real idea of king b2, knight e3. Now here king b3 is played. We have knight d1, that pawn's taken. Yeah, so clearly uh, 
placards in the driving seat, winning two pawns there, sacking the e-pawn. And the game ended here. Both engines thought it was plus 6.5 or more. Uh, so it was adjudicated as a win, basically, for Leela. Uh, Leela has the right coloured bishop here, the light square, for this pawn to eventually queen. An example game continuation. King a3, b4, win the knight first. Yeah, it's... White's not really doing anything here. So just imagine this scenario. Let's, let's just cut a long story short. This this king's going to get back and the pawn's going to queen. The bishop's on the right colour to kick the king out of the corner. So we'll go to the game M position. And yeah, slightly a mysterious set of moves at some point from Senpai with moving the pawns around the king when black's got that semi-open g-file. I thought just in an intuitive sense that seemed wrong. But to Senpai's credit later, uh, the knight manoeuvre to tap into the c5 weakness. It's There seemed to be some certain amount of dark square compensation. But by counter-sacking a pawn, it seems they have renewed some other trump cards, more aggressive king outside past pawn. And it was those which led to White's downfall in this game. But a good fight from Senpai, to its credit, and the Senpai team. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciate this. Thanks so much.